So here's a look. Jarrett ends up being their top recruit. He's a five-star guy. Again, there's only 28 five-star players in the country, and Maryland grabbed one of them. Ruben Hippolyte, the linebacker from Florida, another guy who had offers from programs like Alabama. Penny Boone, a guy from Detroit, Michigan, three-star player who's really talented. Uncle was an NFL player. Alfonso Boone for a long time. There are a lot of good guys coming into this Maryland program. And that is all due to the new head coach, Mike Loxley, who joins us now from College Park. And, and Mike, let's start with the news of the day. How big was it for you to hear today that five-star Raheem Jarrett was coming your way? You know, that was a huge, huge get for us. Uh, the Terps got better today. And, you know, to be able to recruit a guy like Rockham Jarrett, who was a national guy, uh, our staff did a tremendous job. Our players, the coaches and their wives all played a huge role in, in, in being able to secure a commitment from one of the top players in the country. But again, I got to give the kid a lot of credit. Um, it shows the type of character he has as a player that he's a guy that's a leader. He, you know, he's not afraid to take on tough tasks. He's not afraid to come be a part of something that's growing. And it, it speaks volumes to the kid's character. And I've known Rakim since he was in the eighth grade. So uh, glad to have him be a Terp. And he's the cherry on top of what was a pretty decent group of wide receivers as well. Anyone else in particular stand out to you? Yeah, you know, Day-Day McDougal from down there in South Florida. Uh, Day-Day is one of those South Florida route runners, you know, coming from Alabama where we had guys like Jerry Judy and Calvin uh, Ridley. You know, Day-Day is right in the same type of mold as those type of players, a big play threat. And, you know, one of my favorite guys that, that we signed is Nick DeGenero. He's a kid out of New Jersey uh, that, you know, came to one of our camps, ran 4-4 high, jumped 38 tremendous athlete with good short area quickness and so you know for this offense to be effective you've got to have guys that can win uh, out in space and win at the top of routes and and we really feel like we improved the the receiver room uh, with this year's recruiting class as you rebuild this maryland program what is the value right now of bringing in junior college kids you know, for us, because of depth issues, especially along the front on both sides of the ball, it was really important. And we targeted junior college players up front on the O-line and D-line very early. Uh, we were fortunate enough to go over to Independence Community College, a program that's had some great success and signed some, some big guys up front. And then, you know, on the offensive line, you know, uh, securing the commitment of a big guard out of Independence, Jahari, uh, were big gets for us because we really struggled with depth on both sides of the ball up front and these guys have the ability to come in and give us immediate help this is again an impressive class but it comes off of what was not the most impressive of on-field seasons so how what would you do if a recruit that you were talking to would point out the fact that this wasn't a great year this year how do you choose to handle that discussion well, I think the big thing is we've been really transparent. I mean, you know, we've had three head coaches in five years here at Maryland, and that's three different recruiting philosophies, three different structures and offensive systems. So what we're doing now is we're laying a foundation and, and creating stability, and it starts with, you know, being consistent with who you are as a program. Um, we were transparent in the recruiting process. We don't hide uh, or shy away from the fact that we finished three and nine. There were some big games and some good games there early where we showed what we could be when we play the way we're capable of. Then we hit a, a law. We had some injuries. You know, we're really three games away. You know, we lost a close game to Temple. We played Michigan State tough. We had opportunities against Indiana. And to me, those are the differences in being three and nine and six and six, which to me, uh, uh, we're not as far away as some people think, and we've been able to share that vision and show the players, the recruits that we brought in, exactly where the program is and where we're going. We just showed video of Penny Boone, one of the running backs that you're bringing in. What are the chance we could see one of those running backs playing this fall? Well, after losing two big-time players like Javon Leak and Anthony McFarlane from our backfield, uh, you know, that, that was a, a must-get to go f replenish the backfield. You know, we've got a guy like Lolo Harrison who's coming back off of a knee injury along with Jake Funk, but we definitely had to create and go out and recruit the talent, the type of talent that we've had at the running back position. And Penny uh, is one of those guys. He's a big, strong runner that is really athletic for a big guy. He kind of reminds me of Bo Scarborough, who I had at Alabama. Uh, catches the ball well out of the backfield, plays really physical. Uh, he's your typical Big Ten back, and it, it was a great get to go get the Detroit Player of the Year, uh, the Metro Player of the Year, to come down here and help us. 
What a really strong way to close out this class. Michael Loxley, congratulations. Thanks so much for giving us some of your time. Thank you, guys.